Hey everyone, welcome back to the Beamer Barn. In today's video, I think I figured out the issue with boost on my E9335i. So we're not even gonna wait anymore. We're gonna get straight into today's video. I have some things set up that I've been messing around with and I'm gonna show you what I think the culprit is to why I keep getting an engine malfunction light. So that's right, in our last video, we kept getting a low boost pressure code from INPA on this car, along with a misfire, but I think that is just an injector going bad or maybe some bad gas. But the low boost code, I couldn't figure out. I kept on visually looking at the charge pressure system, and after we replaced one of the clips for the intercooler, I figured that it was a complete system. Now, just a few minutes ago, I did have the intercooler off, and I filled it with water. As you can see, some is still drying, you know, dripping out right there, because because I wanted to see if there were any cracks in the intercooler. And if there were, we would have had water leaking out of the core here, but there wasn't. There was zero water leaking from this intercooler. So that leads me to relooking over the charge pressure system. I checked the tightness of the clamps on the charge pipe, as well as on the silicone of the outlets for the turbo on this side. Everything appears to be tight. The uh, charge pipes down there for the intercooler, those have seals on them. And I haven't looked yet, but I would think that the charge pipe has a seal under it. But I decided that I wanted to look over the solenoids because I know that those can fail sometimes and also the wastegate actuators on the turbos. So the first thing that I did was I pulled off the lines. Now keep in mind, there should be some vacuum canisters right here. So we're kind of uh, really hoping that the vacuum system and the vacuum pump works good but these go directly into the solenoids after the expansion tank, and that's gonna be these adapters right here. So what I did was I hooked up a tester to the solenoid, and I opened and closed it while sucking on this tube here. I know it's a little uh, manual of a test, but I was able to determine that the solenoids were both working. So that's a good thing. The solenoids are working, they're clicking, and they're uh, allowing the vacuum to flow when it needs to, and to stop flowing when we need to go out of boost. So when you apply vacuum to the wastegates, they should close and allow the car to reach boost. So the next thing that I wanted to do was I pulled off the vacuum line that goes directly to the wastegate. It's all the way down there. And I applied my vacuum tester right here. So this way we can manually see if the wastegate opens and closes. And let me show you guys what I found out. All right, so down here underneath the car, we're gonna test the wastegate for bank one turbo. That's the forward turbo. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze this hand pump and the vacuum gauge is gonna start pulling vacuum here. And then we should see the wastegate move. So that right there is the wastegate. And now I'm gonna start pumping. And that looks good. So look, the wastegate is moving. There it is, fully actuated. And then when I release the vacuum on my hand pump here, it goes back to its rest position. So when it closes, that's what allows the exhaust gases to build boost in the turbocharger, and then you get boost out of the turbo. So now let's test bank number two. You'll see that I have my hand pump now connected to the hose that goes straight over to the wastegate actuator, just like we did for the front turbo. And now we're gonna apply the vacuum and see if that arm right there moves. I know it's a little bit harder to see, but there it is right there, that wastegate actuator for the rear turbo. And you'll see that it's actually really close to the band clamp for the uh, turbo down pipe. And what I notice a lot or what I've seen people do is tighten the downpipe clamp too close to the wastegate arm and then that thing get bound up and not be able to open and close. So we're gonna go ahead and apply a vacuum now and then see what it does. Uh-oh. Well, that's almost 15 pounds of vacuum there and it's not opening. I think we might have our culprit here. Hopefully it's not seized up or anything. Hopefully it's just the downpipe clamp itself. So all that we need to do is uh, loosen that downpipe clamp and then do the test again and see if it works. All right, so I loosened that clamp. Now it's time to see if this thing will move. All right, look at that. I think that's, I think that's full actuation right there. 
and it goes back too, but you can see that it, it wants to back up against that clamp. So we're gonna have to move that clamp up so that it doesn't happen in the future. But look at that, it works. So, well, it works now. Let's hope that that was our issue and maybe we'll have full boost on this thing in a second. Moments later. All right, so our new downpipe clamp position is much better than it was before. You can see that we have ample clearance between the wastegate arm and the downpipe clamp, which is right there. You can barely see it but we have clearance now, so we have good actuation of the wastegate, and now we're gonna go ahead and put everything back together, including our intercooler, and get this car running. While the car warms up, we're gonna go ahead and clear out the error memory. So we'll do F5 here, and that should clear the fault codes. And uh, I'm wondering if we're gonna get we're gonna get that misfire to come back. It was misfiring on cylinder three, and then I moved uh, injectors three and one, and then the misfire went away. But if it misfires again, I'm hoping that it's on cylinder one, because that would just mean that we have a bad injector. So uh, I think we should be good to take it for a drive now, and hopefully we get into some boost. <laughs> oh boy. I hope you guys just heard that. Let me, let me try to do it again for you. That definitely sounds like boost to me. You know, maybe we should just run some seafoam through the fuel system and maybe that'll take care of our misfire injector issues. I wonder if anyone's ever tried that before. So far so good, we did a couple of small pulls and no fault codes, but let's take it out to the uh, open road and see what we can get with like a 50% throttle pull. Whoa, and not bad, not bad. A little bit stuttery there, kinda maybe the transmission it feels like was not wanting to shift smoothly into gear put the windows up so you guys can hear the uh, sounds a little bit better. Whoa, a little bit of that wheel shake right there. So it makes noises, that's for sure. Doesn't sound too, too bad. But I have to say, I think it should be faster. Never mind. You know what? I think it is pretty fast, and that was like, that was like 75 to 80 percent throttle there, and it was kind of not, not misfiring. We'll have to check the computer here, but no, no drivetrain malfunction. That's impressive. Well, she definitely accelerates without misfiring, so that's a good sign and I'm still struggling to see any smoke from behind the car, so I think the turbos, at least internally, they're fine. I think we might need to get some seals for those, but wow, look at that, guys, with uh, just a few fixes, you know, throwing around some injectors. I think probably those injectors were bad from not having been opened and used in a while, and just by driving the car, it looks to have cured all of its own problems. This is the weirdest car ever. It seems to just cure its own problems. So that's right, we've got boost now and the car drives great. Just a couple of minor uh, things that we're going to have to add to the list, uh, just by suspension pieces, you know, things that are loose, uh, the brakes, not sure what's going on there, but all that put aside, we finally know that our motor is 100% rock solid and the transmission works as well. We don't have any faults from that, any faults from the drivetrain that would tell us that we shouldn't use this car as a donor. So I'm excited to announce that we're gonna be beginning our E91 swap in the next episode. I'm gonna go ahead and put both cars in the garage and then we're gonna start the meticulous process of transferring over everything that we need to get this car running in 
its new body. So I hope you guys are excited as I am and be sure to subscribe to the channel because of all the cool and exciting content that we have coming up soon. Like and comment this video if you enjoyed watching and hopefully this helped you guys at home diagnose your wastegate or uh, wastegate solenoid issues and that way if you're having issues finding out where your boost leak is that's not really a boost leak you'll be able to look other places and eventually find the issue for yourself so as always i hope everyone has an awesome day and we will see you in the next video